Hi, hello everyone. My name is Sifu Liu Yong. Today I'm very happy to have a Guru Susanto today. So he is a select instructor. I always want to do select. You know, I always think about you know select. You know how they deal with knife. You know the fighting style. Very interesting, right? So I would like you know to invite him today to show us a little bit more about select martial arts. Yes. Right. You're welcome. So they might tell me you know uh, what is your uh, background in training. Oh, well, I've done silat since a young age, teenager. I've done both Malaysian and Indonesian silat, also Kung Tao and Sending. So I've done silat from Northern Malaysia, and I've also done the Kung Tao and Sending of Southern Malaysia and Sulawesi. Wow. I've had teachers from this country as well as abroad in Malaysia and Indonesia. So am, in I, am, I, am, I, am I right, you know, um, silat is just like a Chinese term Kung Fu. Yes, it's got correct. a lot of different brands, different absolutely. lineage, right? Yeah, absolutely. So every lineage got a little bit different. Yes, right? correct. They, they all call it silat. Yeah, that's correct. It's like Kung Fu. Mm. You know, you've got many different styles of Kung Fu. You know, you've got Northern systems yeah, yeah, of Kung yeah, Fu, yeah, Southern yeah. systems. Yeah. And they're not all the same, you know, they may share a lot of similar principles and concepts, but they've all got their own expression. So Northern, Northern Malaysian Silat has a bit of Thai influence, okay, you I know, see. so in a lot of the Bugis arts, like the Kung Tao has a bit of a Chinese influence, you know, um, that could get me into a bit of trouble, you know, like, okay. but, uh, you know, it's clear for people to see, even I in see. the history, one of the Kung Tao systems I do goes back to a Ming Chinese princess. Her name I was Hung Li Po, okay, and I her see. bodyguards practiced a form of Kun Tao, and then they disseminated over time in so, Malaysia. And, so how about, yeah. you know, uh, you explain to us a little bit about the philosophy or the concept of this lab, you know, you're teaching or you're doing? Okay, the, the, the concept behind it is to move from the heart and to be natural. Mm. With correct structure, correct alignment, and expanded mind I and see, heart, I see, you know? Okay. So we have a lot of expand, expansive motions. Uh, because we move from the heart, our we don't have a guard posture. Mm. So we don't have a posture like this, or like boxing like this. It's just either this posture like this is open. So the Silat saying is you should be able to fight from any position that right, you're, you're ready any time. Any time, right? any time. See, that's correct. So uh, do you mind, you know, show us today, for example, I know nothing about Silat. So yeah. today you can show me some different techniques. I can give it a go, practice it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, definitely. So what we can do today, we'll do the Garuda system, which mm -hmm. is the first system that I teach. It's a subsystem within the Silat Sakriya system. And that system will give you good foundation, good stance work, good alignment. Um, the concepts of opening and closing, Perfect. rising, sinking, These are, which are common principles within the Chinese martial arts. Yeah? Yeah. Start off from this cross position. Now we step out and we open from our heart here. We expand forward. Okay? Now we learn to then twist where we're absorbing with this hand and we're projecting with this arm. But it's from the hips, from the stance. So we do it again, we change. Mm. And we change. Cool. And we change. So this is teaching your basic parries. Yeah? So if I can use uh, Brother Omar. Yeah. All right, so Brother Omar's here. And if I'm here, Brother Omar punches. This teaches me one parry. You see the other punch? This teaches me this parry come, this teaches me to parry here, and this teaches me. So these are the basic parries that you learn. I see. So okay. Okay. everything is from the hip, yeah. isn't it? Everything yeah, is from the hip yeah. and shoulder. So if he comes in again, if I'm in this stance and he grabs my arms, so he grabs my arms, if I'm in this stance, I should be able to disrupt his balance. So he comes in and here, I should be able to disrupt his I balance. See. So this one going in and one going out. One going out. So one absorbing and one projecting. So and it's all down to sinking within the stance. So the power is not coming from the arms. So if he grabs me, that, you know, I'm not doing this to so grab tight. I'm not trying to move him with my arms. Even the structure, any stiff structure, I'm not trying to influence that. All I'm trying to do is turn with my stance. And then while I'm turning with my stance, I'm absorbing here and projecting on this one, and even this way, yeah? So this is a kind of pressure testing to see if you're using your hips, and if your hips and your arms and, and legs are all connected together as one. Yeah, so you can do it. So if you come into punch, I move here. So this is my high, low, attack line. So this is just a principle. 
So if you come in and I do this, I don't necessarily have to punch from here because I'm too far away, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I can yeah. kick, you know? If you come in again, or if I'm closer in, I can take into an I into see. a lock, yep. an arm lock. If you come in again, I can move this out of the way that I can come in with these type of uh, almost tie looking. Uh, tie kicking. Yeah, tie kicking. I see. Um, it's not that we borrowed from the Thai systems because these particular systems come from Northern Malaysia, Southern because Thailand, it's Yeah, yeah. there's similarities I see, I see. So also this answers some of the questions. Some people, they may think they punch and then the people, they go back, you yeah. know, they're not staying there for yeah. you to do it. Then yeah. you can do the kick, isn't it? Because the range is longer, isn't it? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, so for example, if I punch and I go back, then yeah. you can do the kick. Yeah, then I can come yeah, in kicking and everything because I follow you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's teaching me, if you come in, I've got to follow yeah. immediately yeah, exactly. with something. I see, I see. You okay, know? that's really okay. good. First one was called Bois Satu, means first Bois, this is called second Bois. I see. Okay, so the principle on the second Bois is um, slightly different to the first Bois. The first Bois, we go flanking yep. out of the way of the opponent. The second Bois, we do the same flanking, but we, we come in more with a kick, okay. and then we go back. So we do this, and we kick, I see. and we go back. We change, we kick, and we go back. So here, a bit like this Wing Chun kick, a bit, yeah, the yeah. side kick, a bit like Wing Chun kick, like this, right? Yeah, absolutely. I see. You know, similar to the Wing Chun kick. So here and then here. So we could parry, 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 and then we move off and to kick. Okay. Oh, yeah, I see. Okay. So if I use yeah, Omar, okay. Um, so if I'm here, Omar comes in to punch. My aim is to move out of his attack, range of his attack. This gives me balance, but it's also for multiple opponents. Also can attack him. With this hand, I want it to go towards his center line, yeah, and also his center of mass, so I can disrupt his balance. But at the same time I disrupt his balance, I kick his knee here to bring him down. So this is the movement. So if he comes in again, so he steps in, I go one, two, you see, and I kick. So if he comes in again, I can move to this side and I can do it here. In a, in a real street fighting situation, as, it, as you put your jukes up and you come in to punch me, I can just move like this and hit here and then move out the way. So come in again, punch, see, move out the way and just do this and uh, go away basically, you know, run away from the situation. Also what I can do, if he throws me one, two as he steps in, one, two, I can use this to defend here and kick here, but it's a bit nasty because it crosses the body and it will be damaging his spine his knee and his hips and so forth. I see. So this yeah. is uh, the first one is like stepping 45 backward. This yes. one is stepping sideways, basically. Yeah, basically. Side kick, basically. Yes, correct. Okay. The number three, isn't number it? Three, yeah. Bois so three. number three, what is it about? Well, bois three is works on bois two. So as we're here, as we lift up, kick, we're coming in and we're trying to do uh, a neck lock That's here. You know, we can drop, we can turn here like this, and we can come back, and then we just come back like this to this position. So we're up, kick, and drop, and then back again. Then we can change this way, we're up, we kick, and we're, and we're into the bois position here. So the application of this bois, if Omar comes, now if he steps in to punch, I do this, I take him, as I'm taking him here, I come in here. I come in here to put him into a neck lock. So my other hand here is, is pushing him into the lock. My hand here goes to the back of my neck. The motion of the lock is done in such a way that we do it at an angle, 45 degree angle towards me. So as I'm doing it towards me, if you put your hand on my uh, thigh and give me a tap when you feel that you're being strangled. So in the silat, because it's a battlefield art, a lot of the locks are called death locks, kunchi mati. Means you have to finish the person off, you know, because it's a battlefield art, you know. So as I put the lock on, within milliseconds, you should feel um, that it's suffocating, yeah? So just tap me when you feel that. Ready? Mm -hmm. Steady? Go. Okay? So it's as quick as that. Okay, but if we come to this here, now if you step into punch, 
So I'm here, this, this in itself will hit into the carotid artery and so forth and can create a knockout. But we do this to bring him into us here. You see, this, but this can be a hit, punch into the spine. You have to take his center of balance. So you have to come into him here like this. Then you apply this. So this is not just there for any other reason, just a touch. So if he's here, I'm like this. I'm taking this, this in itself ain't gonna work. If I push him round, then this can work. Okay? If that makes any sense, you know what I mean? In that sense. Uh, another variation, he comes in. If I do this and he blocks my hand, there's no way that I can come in here to do something. So what I do is I walk round and I do it here. The same technique and I control him here. Okay, so if I do that again, he comes in and then blocks. If you block it, yeah, he blocks and I come in here. This is where the technique. Actually, you tell me, just tell me, in Silak, you know, they got some sensitivity drill, which is similar to Wing Chun, you know, similar to the Qi Sao, right? Or Tai Chi pushing hand. So I'm quite interested to know what's the difference and how to apply or how they compare to Wing Chun, right? So how about, uh, you show me a little bit first, right? Actually, what's the difference and why are you doing differently? Yeah? Okay, right, so in Silak, we have many sensitivity drills, okay? Uh, we call, some of them, we call them Palam Bas, which means like parry, reference, trap, last kind of drills, which is means if you throw a punch, we do all of this kind of like the hubbard lubbard, and then you parry, trap, hit, and we do all of this, you know? And, but we use opening, closing motions to generate yeah. power when we do it, because it's a don't touch me system. Yeah. Yeah. We want to make that hand go like this, yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. yeah. right, so if you punch, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. So, yes, exactly. I see, I see. We don't want to make contact and stay, yeah, yeah exactly, like this. Like this. Yeah. Okay, so in our, uh, we have certain ones that absorb, like if you come here, if you punch, we learn to absorb here, then I punch, you absorb, and punch, and we absorb, and I there's see. a knife in my hand and a knife in yours. And we try to keep the wrist point connected. So the wrist point connected is where the blade is, so we can always control the blade hand. See. You see? Yeah. We can always control the blade hand. We don't want to do this, because then it will cut us in the inside. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, and we don't want to scoop either. So it's absorbing, it's taking, we can do our bong sal here, I we see. can do our whips, you know, see. and so forth. So, utilizing that concept, in knife fighting, we have two major points of control. One is the wrist, and you know, we, it's not about learning to get to the person's structure, like in internal Chinese martial arts or controlling or finding their center. It's just purely about controlling the knife hand. So if he's got a knife here, he's gonna stab me. I wanna control this, I wanna control that. I've got a knife, he wants to control my hand. So, but this is only a millisecond within a fight. Yeah. So it goes like this, we go down, you know, we go up, we can go around here. As we're doing this, we try to touch. So you, so you touch this means yeah, you touch, stab, like, stab me. Yeah, right? you stabbed. I see. You know, see. so we don't have to go mad and go whoosh, whoosh. This can I come see. later. Yeah. So as we got all this flow, we learn how to do all of that and I all see. of this pull with back. the knife, pull I back. See. I see. You know, but so, a, so actually you can grab a knife to do it, is it, can we? Yeah, we can also, so, uh, so in knife fighting, it's not just about deflecting away. So we're learning, this is control. where you grab. I see. You see, so if I'm here, I'm learning this is where I, I grab, where I, I, I control. Knife, yeah, because yeah. if the knife is coming in here, yeah. I learn it to control it here. I, I learn to so control this. this. Is something different. Yeah. yeah. I see. The next movement will be learning how to then get to the elbow. Yeah, so as we're doing this, we come into the elbow like this, we come into the elbow like this. Elbow. We're coming through I this see. here, into through the elbow range, yeah, I like see. this. Because I've got knife, I want to come in here. Even if you might get cut here, but at least I'm not getting into your vital points. Oh, I see. You stop me. So yeah. if I can't, if I can't stop here, I stop here. Yeah. If you can't stop here, you yeah. stop here. At least you know you, yeah. you can keep. But it. this is the most important to stop. Course, so then what we do, we learn to come in. We learn to come in, but always knife angles. I see. So here, I'm going for a knife. I'm going for a knife. This yeah. is what I do. Yeah. Yeah. I control the bicep. Yeah. You know? Control the bicep. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and also. Later on, it's good you're doing that because we also learn to release, yes. you know, release the biceps, I see, I see. you know, I and see. we learn to do all of this sort of stuff. So it's teaching you low line, 
Yeah. Yeah, low line. Here. Yeah, if I step forward, you step back. You come in, that's good. You know, it's teaching me how. Yeah, it's good. And then come in here, yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah, that's brilliant. I go low, you can be high. Yeah. You know, I go high, you can be low. Yeah. Yeah, so. I see. See, this is what happens. Yeah. Because in a real fight situation, you grab my knife hand like this, and I'm forcing hard. Yeah, yes. that's good. Yeah. Now you've got that, your knife, and you're trying to yes. come in. Yes. So yes. I'm going to yes. control, I want to. Yeah, exactly. So it's more dynamic. It's more dynamic. I see. So, so this is quite interesting, you know, I think we can uh, in, uh, compromise, you know, uh, the Wing Chun into the select little bit yes. and then we can try the knife yes. and do the Shih Tzu together. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Right. the end bit now right so I'm quite interested to see you know how our uh, Wing Chun uh, second hand compared to the select you know, sensitivity drill right so we're going to have fun we will see you know one minute you know see how we're getting on and then we can give uh, each other some feedback yeah, what okay. do you think yeah, yeah? Fine, thank okay you. right so in the, in the next minute we will try to compare both sensitivity drill and then we see how we're getting on okay right yeah. thanks a lot thank you yes okay thank we give it a go yeah yeah. So we touch hand in yeah. here. Yeah. Right, so that's good. So we can go low, we can go oh, high. high. Yeah. Yeah. So as soon as I feel he's wanting to make control, I release my hands. Yeah. I release. Release. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. <laughs> well done. Thank well you very done. much. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Leo is very highly skilled <laughs> and he's a very humble martial artist, very skilled. And I'm very honoured that he has come to my school <laughs> to a visit. Me too, you know, thanks a lot, dude. Thank you for sharing this stuff with us. You're welcome. I think it's good. Thank you. I hope you enjoy it. You're welcome. Okay.